Hey guys, welcome back. I've got another skincare reaction video for you. And I actually was not going to do this one, but you have requested it so many times. I'm doing it. It's Paris Hilton. It's her Harper's Bazaar. Go to bed with me. You guys know I love that show. I'll put a link to the original video in the description box below. Um, you guys, I have a deep respect for Paris Hilton. I don't care what anyone says about her, but she is the original influencer. She made Kim Kardashian. Kim has gone on with her career and done really smart things, but let's be real. It was Paris who created her, right? So she also kind of created Nicole Richie. I mean, Paris, you guys, Paris has done a lot. I wasn't gonna do this video because when people were DMing me or making comments about it for me to do this reaction, it seemed more like mean comments about Paris versus comments about her skincare. So I was really going to just avoid it because I'm not here to be a mean girl. This is all about education and someone's skincare routine, their products, their technique, that kind of stuff. And it's about education. It's not about being mean. But I went ahead and looked at this video, which I don't normally do before a skincare reaction because I want it to be like, this is exactly what I'm thinking at the time. Um, but I went ahead and watched it thinking I wasn't going to do this review. And I decided that actually there were some interesting things. She's using some of her own products. She's got some tools in here. So let's do this. It's time to go to bed with me. That's hot. So this is my skincare routine and it's between 10 to 12 steps. I've been taking care of my skin and obsessed with skincare ever since I was seven years old. My mom taught me everything I know. So after I put my hair back. You know, I will say, so Paris and I are the same age and I think Paris looks great. I don't think she looks any different than when I was 20. You know, I think she looks exactly the same. And, uh, and I think she's looking great. And if she's been working on her skin since she was seven years old, I mean, good for her. I had no idea what was going on with my skin at seven years old. And if she learned it from her mom, even better, because that's who we learn from usually. I just think that's a, that's a big deal. She looks really, really good. And you guys know, people with a lot of money could look terrible at this point in her life. She could have gone too far with like plastic surgery and all that stuff. And I really, I think she looks exactly the same. So good for her. I use my cleanser, which is the Paris Hilton Pro DNA Dual Action Cleansing Gel. This is my favorite cleanser. I love the consistency and it has glitter in it. Well, not glitter, it's actually diamond dust and caviar. It's always good to massage the product into your skin. Always feels great after a long day of shooting just to get all your makeup off. And this cleanser just works so well. You don't even have to use that much. So I was like using just a towel and wiping everything off. And then I take my little cotton swabs and just make sure I get all of the makeup off. So my next. All right, first off, this is why I love Paris, you guys. It's glitter. Oh, no, 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 no. Glitter. No, no, no. It's diamond dust and caviar, which same, same to her. I love it so much. That was, that actually made my day completely. Um, I actually looked into the ingredients of this cleanser. Um, there's no caviar. There's no, there's no um, diamond dust. There's no glitter, um, which I'm actually very happy about. There is no glitter <laughs> because we don't want any glitter. And in fact, you know, I don't really know if I want diamond dust in any of my cleansers either. The ingredients are actually pretty decent in this cleanser. Um, the caviar she's talking about is called caviar lime. And I don't know exactly what that is, but it is an AHA, which you guys know I love. I love AHAs to exfoliate my skin. I love a chemical exfoliation. It's um, also got mica in it. So I think that's what she thinks is the diamond dust. Um, it gives it that like iridescent look, which I prefer not to have, especially in a cleanser. You find it a lot in like highlighters and eyeshadows and that kind of stuff. And that makes more sense to me. But in a cleanser, I don't think it's necessary. Um, if anything, it just makes it more of a fun type of cleanser, but overall the ingredients make it, you know, a really good, decent cleanser. Um, on the, on the website, it says that this removes makeup. So I'm assuming because this is her brand, um, she's not going to show us, you know, a cleanser, a first cleanse, um, like a oil or a micellar water or anything like that, because it's not something she sells instead. Instead she sells a cleanser that's supposed to remove your makeup. So I get it, but you guys know, um, I don't think that this will be like a sufficient enough cleanse. And in fact, we never even saw her cleanse her eye area. Um, and then we saw her use a washcloth, which 
um, arguably could be what's actually cleansing her skin. Um, so I'm not really sure. She was, a, you know, she seemed like she was actually really gentle when she was using the washcloth, but her skin was turning really pink. So we know she's got sensitive skin just from that because I don't think she was rough with her skin when she was wiping, she, but she was turning a little bit reddish pinkish. So I'm gonna start to say she's probably got sensitive skin. So I would love, you guys know it, a double cleanse here. Um, it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. That is my eye cream. And this is another one of my products. I love this eye cream because it immediately depuffs. I always rub it just around my eyes. It's good just to get around your whole eye area going in this motion. And what I love about this is I wanted to develop something that was basically just makes it look like, like a Photoshop look. So anytime you're going out at night or going to bed at night, it gives you that vibe and then I have this. All right, so this is interesting. Um, usually, well, first off, you guys know how I feel about eye creams. They're just glorified uh, moisturizers, it, you know, nicely packaged into a little pot for you. Um, I looked up the ingredients. It's a great moisturizer slash hydrator. It's got glycerin, it's got shea butter at the top of the list. Um, it has, you know, it's got a lot of ingredients. There's fragrance, there's that kind of stuff. Um, there is actually diamond powder in this versus the cleanser where she said there was diamond powder. There's mica in the cleanser, there's diamond powder in this. Um, she says that, you know, it's, it's like luminizing the eye area. It looks like she's concealing and stuff. I would venture to say that's the diamond powder because what it's truly doing is just like reflecting light a little bit because it does kind of act like a glitter. You know, it's, it's giving that luminosity and reflecting light. Um, you don't get any real benefits from anything like mica or diamond powder. Neither of them are really active. They're not active like a retinol. You know, you're not gonna get like that long-term anti-aging effect. It's just something temporary. So you're almost putting like a makeup onto your skin um, that's gonna reflect some light. I'll also throw out there, you know, like diamond powder just sounds really cool and really nice. It's very on brand, I think, for someone like Paris Hilton. It's not like a crazy ingredient to have in this eye cream but are you getting any long-term benefits? No, it's just gonna reflect and maybe look like it's going to uh, like make it look like you're anti-aging a little bit, like you're, you're starting to like blur the look of the fine lines around your eyes, which is great for the day. And that's when I usually say, if you're gonna use an eye cream, use it during the day, because that's when you're gonna get the most benefit. To really get a good look from the diamond powder, you'd have to have so much diamond powder in there that this would be a much more expensive product. Like 70 bucks is expensive for an eye cream, but it would probably be more like $400, maybe even more money if they truly packed it with some diamond powder. But uh, I do see that she's going to go into using a, an eye tool, the Foreo, and I would actually recommend using um, some kind of an oil or a thick cream in that case, so you get that lubrication around your eye or around your skin if you're gonna use any kind of tool because you wanna have that slip, you don't want it to pull on your skin. So normally I would be like, I don't know why she's using an eye cream now, but considering that she's gonna go into a tool, I think it makes sense. Which is by Foreo, and it really just gets the product in. So it's good to always do this for lymphatic drainage. And then you pull it down the side of your face and then down your neck. So I do this every morning and every night before bed. And it just really gets the product in as much as possible. My next step is Dr. Barbara Sturm. And so I will say, um, I appreciated that simplicity of it because that's truly what these types of tools do is they're, do, they're, they're for lymphatic drainage. So she did a great job. She was very gentle. She moved it out and then she brought it down. The only note I'll make is that she didn't put anything that we saw on the rest of her skin. So as she brought it down, there was no slip there. That said, I thought she was pretty gentle. So, you know, there's, there's that argument I guess you could make too. And some of the product might actually be getting on the Foreo tool as she's bringing it across her eyes and then bringing it down. So it's probably not that bad, but it's just a note. Um, but great, she knows her lymphatic drainage. By Pollution Drops. I love these, Barbara's one of my friends, so. I'm only really using use my skincare line, but her skincare line is amazing as well. So I love using this. And the Pollution Drops were great especially in Los Angeles with all the pollution. It's important just to make sure that your skin stays perfect and pollution-free. 
my next step is oxygen. So we're back with Dr. Barbara Sturm. Um, so, you know, it's funny, I've seen a lot of comments about the, the Dr. Barbara Sturm co uh, products and you guys being like, they must be paying these celebrities to promote her stuff and she's sending it to them and all that. Um, you know what I'll throw out there? It's like Paris just said, they're friends. They're friends. She's using the products and honestly, if you've got that much money, it probably doesn't seem that expensive. Her products seem really nice and luxurious. You saw Anastasia using it next to her La Mer products and stuff. It's probably considered that luxurious to them. Um, and so you have to almost like put it in perspective like that. Do I think that these people are getting paid by Dr. Barbara Sturm to promote her products? It's very unlikely. And I'll tell you why. They're rich, you know? Like, you know, it's like, what? Well, how much money can she possibly offer them that they'd be like, sure, I'll go ahead and promote your product? Because it's like, Anastasia is a billionaire. Paris is so rich, she was born absolutely wealthy. So do, do they need that? Do they need Dr. Barbara Sturm to pay them? I don't think so. I think being friends is, the, the bigger key word here. But when you look at the ingredients of this product, it's an antioxidant serum. It's not a bad product. There's nothing wrong with it. It probably does feel good. Antioxidants do fight free radicals. So it is anti-pollution because pollution is free radicals. So it does probably what it says it does. And that's that it's it just delivers antioxidants to your skin. So it's not a bad serum at all. It's got great ingredients. Um, one thing I'll also point out is it doesn't seem like Paris uses a lot of product. Maybe it's because it's a video she's trying not to like go too hard with whatever she's putting on. Um, I would, you know, with the serum, I would kind of go for it. Put a little bit more. She brought it down to her neck. You know, you guys have mentioned in comments like she's going downwards. You notice a lot of people are going down. Um, and gravity, you don't wanna like work with gravity and bring everything down, you wanna go up. It's true, I mean, are we getting really technical at that point? Absolutely, like, you know, it's more about padding onto your skin to be completely honest, because whenever you're moving like this, you're just dragging the product all over. So I actually do, uh, like a swiping motion on my skin at first in a very gentle way. But then once I've moved all the product around where I want it and on my neck, then I actually pat my skin. So I'd say that's more of a proper technique if we want to really nitpick it. Um, but I'm also just noticing, you know, she did bring it down to her neck. She didn't go up. She went down again, nitpicking, but it also just didn't look like she had much product on there. So I would use a little bit more product. Serum by Nice Skin Beverly Hills. It was actually made by my facialist, Angela Nice, who I've been going to for the past 15 years. I really owe it to her just for doing oxygen facials and red light therapy and, you know, being able to be natural. Because so I think that's really important. As a little girl from like seven to being a teenager before I saw a facialist, all I really knew about were eye creams and serums and neck creams and face creams and everything like that. But then after seeing my facialist, I became like the scientist. I learned even more about red lights and microcurrent technology. And I bought this whole Neurotrist system, which is amazing with wands and just basically has electric currents that build collagen and keep your skin just looking lit. Okay, you know what? Thank you, Paris Hilton, because of all of these videos that we've seen, I appreciate that you gave so much more credit to your esthetician for your skin, because I think that's something that we really need to keep in mind. Celebrities, especially people that are really, really wealthy, they have access to this whole team of people that can make them look good, not just their skin, but just in every single way. And so she's like, for the past 15 years, this esthetician has made my skin look good. I mean, she thinks she's also made her a scientist, which, you know, we won't really comment on, but, um, the, but the fact that she's like crediting her actual facialist, thank you. Because I feel like that's sometimes missing is the fact that, you know, she's literally been going to a facialist for 15 years and we don't even know how many, how often she goes. She might be going once a week. She might be seeing her every single day. We don't know, but, it makes a big difference if you can see an esthetician very regularly for your skin. She's gonna keep her skin clean. She's gonna use all of her new tools on her. She's gonna try new ingredients, things that work really, really well. If she gets some kind of a breakout or anything, she'll probably go see her esthetician. So these are things to keep in mind. Skincare is there to maintain your skin and really just make sure that it's not gonna get any worse. It's just gonna stay good. So you always need to have, you need to get it to a place where it's good. And sometimes that requires help outside 
outside of your skincare products. Sometimes that requires some kind of a treatment. Sometimes that requires the help of a dermatologist. Sometimes it requires the regular help of an esthetician in the form of facials. You have to keep that in mind too. A lot of the time when we're watching these routines, we're not actually seeing what else is going on. And I mentioned that in the Bella Thorne video, she slightly mentioned the microneedling that she does. She gets that done regularly, you guys. She was crediting her skincare routine, but truly what was really probably helping her was that microneedling combined with her skincare. So you have to keep all of that stuff in mind. And if she was doing the microneedling, she was also seeing an esthetician. Um, and so these are things to always keep in mind. And this is the reason why I go ahead and react to these routines myself, but when we're reacting to your guys' routines, we're using a dermatologist as well because there are underlying issues that you might not have had um, addressed before getting into your skincare. But I love that shoot, thank you. Thank you, Paris. Thank you for acknowledging your 15 years with one esthetician. Um, you know what I'll also go, uh, I'll throw out there. So I'm not gonna comment much about that serum that she just used because she said it was made for her. So we don't know what ingredients are truly in that and what makes it made for her. Um, but I will throw out there, you know, we know that Paris has her own skincare line and while she is promoting it throughout this video, I feel like this is a little bit more realistic in the sense of that, in the sense that she's throwing in other products and other brands that she's using and not just saying, I only use my own skincare brand. Because even if I had my own skincare brand, I wouldn't just use that. I like to play around with other products. I like to see what people recommend to me and everything. So it would be so boring to me if I only had one product line that I could use because it was mine. I think it's much more realistic to see her mixing her product line with other people's lines. Um, not to mention, I think it makes it, you know, I, I actually maybe would trust her products more because it means that she's tried other things and she continues to try other products. So we know that she's kind of forming an opinion at the very least. She's forming an opinion about what she has used and what she likes and then trying to incorporate that into her own product line. You know, the other funny thing I wanna mention is that um, when she was 17, before she'd start working with like an esthetician, she only knew about like every type of cream out there, including neck creams. I love that so much. This is, you guys, you gotta love Paris Hilton. It's amazing, she's amazing. As far as the tool that she uses on her or anything else that she's been using, I'm not really gonna comment on it because I haven't tried a treatment with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward because this is about the skincare products. This is another one of my products. This is actually my secret weapon. It's the ProDNA Advanced Recovery Serum. I worked with scientists to create this product and it's from microalgae from the sea. And I love the packaging because it keeps it again airtight. And this is literally like the fountain of youth. So I just rub it in. So what's amazing about this formula is that it repairs your DNA cells and it also illuminates your skin, it makes it youthful, tightens it, and basically just makes your skin glow. The next step is another product. Okay, so this is her secret weapon uh, serum. I was hoping I was gonna find in the ingredients list some type of a retinoid in there. There isn't a retinoid. Um, I thought maybe you know we would see something at least, um, but she does have plankton in here, which she's got her marine, algae extract in there. Who knows how well it's working? We all know like La Mer, that's kind of what they pride themselves on. So she might have something along those lines. And again, that goes back to trying other brands and other products. She's kind of incorporating all of that that she likes. So that's interesting. There are other ingredients in there. There's evening primrose extract, which I noticed in one of her other products that I was looking up. You know, I'm not quite sure how well it works, but I've heard lots of people say that it's a great ingredient for, um, you know, inflammation in your skin. It helps to calm, it helps strengthen your skin, that kind of thing. There's aloe vera water, which we know is calming. Um, there's rosemary extract, which fights, you know, it's antioxidant. You know, there's just a lot of, a lot of antioxidants and stuff and healing ingredients in the serum. So it probably just feels nice. There's also, you know, glycerin is the second ingredient after water. So it means it's a humectant as well. So it's hydrating her skin as well. So no matter what, it probably feels really nice. by Angela Nice. It is the firming neck cream, which I love using with my cream as well. So I put this one on first. So all over the neck. It's important to actually go behind your neck as well, which is a tip that I learned just from having facials and being on set all the time. So it's important to not only take care of the, your face, your neck, and your chest. So it's another good beauty tip. 
after the neck cream. I I'm kind of intrigued to go see Angela Nice as an esthetician. Cause you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at her skin, Paris's skin, and honestly, you, we're the same age, you guys. I don't know if she has anything like filler or Botox or anything like that, but she looks very natural to me. She looks really good to me. And we all know she could have gone way too far, but she chose not to. She looks good. She's really going to this esthetician, I bet. Um, she has a fabulous neck. Did you guys see that? I mean. Paris has always had a really great, I mean, she's got that swan-like neck. I've never actually heard that tip to go behind your neck. I, I would say actually like the skin that's covered by your hair probably is pretty protected to be honest and probably really strong. Though she's always had really short hair. She's got long hair, but we knew her with that like short hair. So maybe because she was always showing her neck and stuff, that was a big point for her. But I mean, either way, it's still a great tip. Get your neck, get your chest. You know, it's not a bad thing to get the back of your neck. It's not gonna harm you, so why not do that? As far as the ingredients in this product, I couldn't find it, you guys, so I have no idea. Do I think you need a neck cream? No, it was in my video of products you don't need. Is a neck cream nice? If you can afford it and you love it and it does the things that you wanna do to your neck area specifically, then sure, why not? Your neck also needs to be treated, but do you need a separate product for that? No, you can use your serums and your moisturizers that you use on your face, bring them down to your neck and you're good to go. You don't need something very specific to your neck. Um, one thing I will say about massaging the back of your neck, if you have like TMJ, you get really tight and you start to build your masseter um, muscles here, you do get that wider looking jawline, like a stronger jawline. And if you don't want that, or if you wanna just like loosen up the area, I have gone to like chiropractors and masseuses who have helped me loosen that whole area up by massaging. And then, you know, just going like up and into the, like the back of my head and everything, and it really helps loosen that area up and it just feels really good. So you're less, you know, you're feeling a little less tension and everything and you're, you're straining. Err you're straining a little bit less uh, in this area, especially as you sleep. It's a really great thing to do actually in your nighttime routine so that you're feeling a little bit less tense when you go to sleep. I use my Paris Hilton face and decolletage cream. And what I love about this as well is that it is airtight sealed, so it keeps the product and all the ingredients in there. And you put that on top of the neck cream, chest, neck, and all the face. I love this moisturizer, just the scent of it is amazing. It's really moisturizing, it's quick absorbing. Basically it feels very clean and fresh. So my next step is this mask. I'm um, looking at the ingredients, I mean they tout like the marine algae and all that kind of stuff, but truly it's just a really nice rich moisturizer, um, which some people need. I'm assuming she has dry skin, so she's using it. We never actually found out what type of skin she has, which I wish we did know. And that said, you know, I, al I also wanna point out, she mentions that she loves the scent. And I go back to, of course we know fragrance isn't good for you, um, but, I do think that people really put a lot into that scent because it's part of that whole routine for them. They want to feel like, you know, they want to feel like that's how they're treating themselves. And it's partially like an aromatherapy for them, not necessarily in like the true form of aromatherapy, but it, you know, it's putting them in a certain state of mind and in, in, a, in a certain mood. And I think there's something to be said of that. I do like some fragrance in my skincare and I say this all the time. I turn a blind eye every once in a while, even though I know that it's not good for everybody. So. Um, you know, I just, I point that out. Fragrance, you know, I always sit there wondering why, I always sit there wondering why um, brands will still continue to use ingredients in their skincare products that we know probably aren't the best, but they just continue to do it. And that's, fragrance is one that I completely understand why brands continue to do it. And it's because people tend to love it. So there you go, what can we do? Ask. I love this because I use it every night before bed. I love red light therapy, it really works. It helps build your collagen and it's amazing this product. I just got it when I was at Harrods in London and I've been using it every night since. And then I have this big boy, which obviously I can't travel with. <sighs> so when I was talking about how I'm a scientist and I have all these different Gadgets. This is an amazing one. You're usually supposed to wear little eye covers because it, it's such a strong light. But this light is like the real one. I love having this as part of my skincare routine because it really just makes all the products go into your skin. I've had this for four years now and 
I love it. I really see a huge difference. This is the type that you would have at like a professional facialist office, and that's where I found it. I said I need one for my house, so this is another step that I. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Paris, that is a goal for me. You guys are gonna see me have one of those light stims in my home one of these days. Just wait, just wait. So you guys constantly ask, does red light therapy work? I think it works. And as far as like the studies I've seen and in talking to estheticians, talking to dermatologists, everyone seems to agree that it does rebuild your collagen and it's good for your skin. I've talked to some estheticians that are like anti and I love hearing those opinions too. Again, there are all these different opinions in the skincare industry. And when it really comes down to the science of it and stuff, sometimes there's not really enough backing or you can just find backing for whatever you want to find, right? Like it's a very interesting industry, but I do love the professional light stem. I love when estheticians use it on me. And if I had the money to buy that thing, I would put that in my house too. As far as the mask, I thought that was hilarious that she started with like the mask that she bought at Harrods, which is probably expensive, probably helps maintain a little bit. And honestly, if you do use light stem every single night and then you travel, if you just want to have something else that's going to help maintain, then why not get that mask? But you guys are constantly asking, should you buy a red light therapy machine for home for the home? Well, if you can get the professional one, absolutely get the professional one. As far as the at home ones, you know, I'm not really sure you guys, I cannot tell you if it for sure works. Sometimes I go ahead and use them because I want to believe that they're working. It's such a long-term benefit that you're getting from red light therapy that it's hard to say if these machines that you have at home are really working for you. So obviously if you can afford that one and put that in your house, and I think you have to also uh, get it through somebody who can actually, who actually has like a license for skincare products like that. Um, I'm sure Paris worked that out. So, uh, you know, there you go. If you can get that machine, I say do it. I use when I feel like my lips need moisturizing and it's called To Go Spa Coconut Lips, AKA the Kisser Fixer. <laughs> this you're supposed to use for like 15 to 20 minutes. So I usually could wear that even under the mask. So just depending on, I have ones for your eyes and for the neck and for the face. So sometimes I'll put on the full face mask, but today the lip one is something that I need because it's really hot outside. While I was developing my skincare line. Um, so those are just like, just like the eye patches. It's just a serum and it's cooling. Um, you know, you don't need that deep puffing on your lip area. In fact, I'd say, I'd venture to say we mostly want puffing in our lip area, but it is giving you, you know, like it is delivering hydrating ingredients to your lips. You'll have to top it with a lip balm afterwards to seal it in just like you would anywhere else on your face. Cause it, again, it's a serum um, and our lips obviously don't have oil glands. So you have to actually put that lip balm on afterwards. You know, she says that she also uses it under the mask. I would too. Why not? Why not do that? As far as like using a full face mask under that mask though, I wouldn't do that just because you wanna get that, the benefit of the LED, whatever benefit you are getting from that LED mask, you wanna make sure it's actually getting to your skin. Carly just asked me a very good question. So she's saying, well, what's the difference of wearing like a face mask, like a sheet mask underneath that mask? underneath the LED mask, it's like a face mask with a mask, um, versus all the skincare products that she has on her skin. So I'll say that these skincare products are thin enough that her skin is still exposed, whereas a sheet mask, especially if she's using like a thicker like hydrogel one or something like that, might actually be blocking that absorption of the LED lights. So I think there's a little bit of a difference in the absorption because the, the sheet mask might not be clear, essentially. So you're not getting that benefit of the, of the LED lights. I'm not sure if it's clear if it's still gonna work. I think it would, I would assume it would because it's light therapy. Um, so if it's clear, I guess it'd be probably fine to use a, a mask underneath. This is something I actually don't truly, truly know an answer to, but I would say that it's probably fine with your skincare products on because those are absorbing while you're actually getting that red light therapy versus a mask that could potentially block the light therapy. I had to do a lot of research so I basically learned everything there is to know about skincare. So I've adopted some really amazing habits of always using serums, always using eye cream. It's so important to always keep your skin hydrated. And if I was stuck on a deserted island, these are the two products that I could not live without. So the next step is my unicorn mist, which is rose water. Um, you know what's interesting is um, she's like serum and eye cream would be her too, instead of like serum and moisturizer. So I'm gonna actually venture to say that she has like normal, maybe normal 
to combination skin. Like she maybe has a little bit of oily, she might be a little bit oily um, in certain spots. And I'll say that because that makes me believe that if she were to just walk out using a serum and an eye cream, she would feel like she has enough moisture. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, that's all. But if I were on a deserted island, the one thing I would have to have with me, well, she chose two, so I'm gonna cho choose two things. The two things I would need to have with me are sunscreen, because I'm assuming the deserted island is a very hot one and sunny, um, but also, I think I'd have to have like something like an aquaphor because then it's like a multi-purpose. Like I could put it around my eyes if I really needed to. I could put it on my lips because I would definitely definitely need lip balm. Ooh, this is, brings up a whole topic. What would you guys have on a deserted island? You get two, not one, two, because she chose two. I love my unicorn mist because it not only hydrates my skin, but it immediately uplifts my mood and just makes me feel happy. And just the scent is so beautiful. It's the most beautiful rose water I've ever smelled and I use it all day long. It's perfect for Coachella, Burning Man, music festivals. I always take it and then I'll just walk through the crowd and start spraying people. Or at Burning Man, I actually bring like a couple hundred bottles and I'll pass them out to people as playa gifts and people always love this. And then during Burning Man, people will start coming up to me and saying, I need that unicorn mist, where is that spray? And then I always run out because the whole playa wants it. Again, you guys. She is Paris Hilton, you guys. Like, do whatever you want. You guys, sometimes I'm like, you know, somebody actually got mad at me for the Anastasia routine and was like, I feel like you gave her a pass. You didn't really like judge her the way you judge other people and stuff. And I'm just kind of like, you know, there's, Sometimes there are people that are just untouchable. What am I gonna really say about this person? She's got so much money. She lives in a different kind of world than we live. I mean, she's like, I was gonna, first I was like, I was gonna comment on the fact that it's just rose water. It's essentially evaporating on your skin. It's not really doing anything for you, except for that aromatherapy. And she mentions like, I love the way the scent makes me feel, right? And then she just goes on to, at Burning Man, she brings some, she brings a bottle and then she's like, well, I bring like a couple hundred bottles. She probably brings like more than that. And she doesn't even realize. And she just passes it along and stuff. I mean, she is Paris Hilton, you guys. Like, what am I going to say? What am I going to say to that? I mean, she's like a fairy godmother at Burning Man. So there you go. So this year, I think I need to bring 500 bottles. So that's my skincare routine. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some new things about skincare. And I'm going to bed. Good night. I mean, I enjoyed watching that. Um, I, you know, I think it just, you learned so much about a person. She was so nonchalant. She wasn't around <laughs> she wasn't joking with us when she's like i bring a couple hundred bottles of this unicorn spray to burning man she does she loves it and she's having a great time and living her life does it have anything to actually do with skin no that had nothing to do with skin um does she do anything really bad to her skin no she didn't um overall i'd say like paris is doing great things and i applaud her for acknowledging that she's been going to the same esthetician for 15 years because that's something that we need to hear because it absolutely does change your skin. When I started going to an esthetician regularly, my skin changed. And in fact, if I had to get rid of everything and choose one thing that I could do to my skin on a regular basis, I would just see an esthetician. That's all I would do. I would see an esthetician, even if it was just once a month, once every quarter, if I could just do that, I would make sure that was the one thing I would do and I would use just moisturizer, cleanser and moisturizer every day on my face and it, as long as I got to see an esthetician because that does change your skin. If you find a good one that you love, everyone's always asking me, you know, like, how do you choose a good esthetician? It's hard. You have to try it out a little bit. It's like dating because even though, you know, I might say that this esthetician is great and for X amount of reasons, somebody else might not. You know, Sharzad and I on our show, The Sass, is a, it's a great example of how we can have you know, a different opinion about somebody's work and what they do and, and if we enjoyed the experience. I love an esthetician who does extractions, good ones that gets everything out of my pores. Sharzad doesn't like it. She has sensitive skin. She doesn't want to have somebody go to town on her skin and extract everything. She just wants it to be more of a luxurious cleansing facial and that's it. She wants it to like hydrate, revitalize her skin. I want that, but I also want extractions, you know? So there's, you know, it's really hard to say. You got to look up reviews. You have to try it out. 
find your esthetician. It will change your life and change your skin. That said, I still think it was a really interesting routine. I loved seeing, you know, what she is using. Um, I loved seeing that she has a light stim, like a true light stim professional one in her home because I'm telling you, I actually think I'm gonna look up, what I'm, I think I might look into this, cause I think I'm ready to have a light stim, a pro one in my own home, you guys. I think I'm ready. We hit a million subscribers. It's time, right? It's time for me to have one. So thank you Paris Hilton for sharing your routine with us and a little glimpse of your life because I think you've got a fabulous life. I really do. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Tell me who you wanna see me react to next in the comments below. Find me in our private Facebook group. We are talking skincare all the time in that group. And it's so awesome to see so many skincare enthusiasts and people who just love skincare and just beauty in general. It's so much fun to have all this. I feel like we're like becoming a little family. So it's really nice to have. I'll leave a link below in the description box so you can join too. Make sure you answer the question, you guys, because we actually, that's how we filter people out is we have you answer the question and then we let you into the group. So find us there. Find me on Instagram at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.